What's good Raider Nation? It's your boy Sanji back at it with another video. In today's video, I want to get into the Raiders versus Bears game and give you guys my thoughts and opinions. At this point, I have rewatched the game twice. Uh, and I believe the Raiders lost this game pretty much for the same reasons we lost against the Chargers. Um, it was just a bad offensive game. And I know a lot of people early on, uh, last week they blamed the offensive line, rightfully so. This week, it's a little bit of the offensive line, but people are also blaming John Gruden. And I don't necessarily agree with that. Uh, we're going to get into this. I want to give you guys my reasoning as to why I don't necessarily blame John Gruden. Uh, as a, At the same time, I also want to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on some of the, the defensive things that I saw. Some of those very positive signs from the defensive side. And again, I know 3-2 and two is not pretty. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're still three and two. We're still above 500 and we still have 12 more games left. So uh, there's still a long season in front of us and we can still pick it up. Uh, just looking at this game from a statistical standpoint, the Raiders didn't do a ton different than the Bears, right? For example, the Raiders were five of 14 on third downs. The Bears were six of 13. The Raiders had 259 total yards. The Bears had 252 uh, yards per play. The Bears had 4.2. The Raiders had 4.3. Uh, we had 188 passing yards, uh, net passing yards. They had 109. Uh, the difference came when it came to running. They had 143 yards. The Raiders had 71. Um, even penalties. I know a lot of people kind of blame the penalties a little bit. Well, the penalties weren't that different. Like We had 10 penalties for 82 yards. They had 8 for 70 that's not a big difference. I know the Raiders penalties, the ones that we gave up, especially on the defense side of the ball, led to at least seven points, right? There was that one drive in which uh, it was Yannick and Kakwe early. I think it was like third and 20-ish and if he just didn't do what he did. But uh, he got that 15-yard penalty, which gave them the first down. Uh, and then a little bit later on in that drive, it was Max Crosby. Same thing, roughing the passer, 15 yards and a first down. Then a little bit later on, it was Jonathan Abram. Uh, I believe it was Jonathan Abram with uh, hands to the face, five yards, uh, automatic first down. And ultimately, they scored on that third down play uh, on that drive. Uh, but even for the Raiders, like we didn't necessarily have those type of penalties. That really helped us extend drives. Now, we did have a pass interference run that came on Roquan Smith uh, with Foster Moreau in coverage. Uh, I think we had one other that, that gave us 15 yards in, in the automatic first down. Uh, but aside from that, like the game wasn't much different, but this is the thing. The Raiders don't play the type of, of game that the, the Bears play, right? The Bears are conservative on offense, you know, five yards, six yards. Let's score 14 points and let the defense do the rest of the work. That's not what the Raiders do, right? The Raiders are a high-powered offense, or at least they want to be a high-powered offense. And they haven't been that at all the last two weeks. We, we scored nine points yesterday. And we scored 14 points the week before. That's not a high-powered offense, man. We have to be putting up 25 to 30 points. Uh, the Chargers, you know, defense isn't that good. And the Raiders scored 14 points against them. The Browns just put up 42 points against that Chargers defense. So, I, again, you know, when you look at the differences between that, there's no excuses, man. And, and I know people are saying it's John Gruden's fault, right? It almost seems like we go from one excuse to the next to the next. At the end of the day, you got to blame every single person on that offense, uh, especially then the quarterback's the most important position. So you have to give equal blame to, to Derek Carr as you do to John Gruden. Uh, people, you know, people come out and say John Gruden doesn't do a good job designing plays or whatever it is. Uh, there's two parts to the game of football, right? A quarter uh, or a coach calls a play in the in the huddle or he gives a quarterback a call go out there and run this play and then it's up to the quarterback and everybody else to execute that play and in my opinion right now that execution is failing uh, but it's not just Derek Carr is failing right it's, it's not that at all uh, it's the offensive line at times it's the receivers dropping passes. It's the running backs not being able to to get going, right? And, you know, you can't necessarily blame running backs because they're so offensive line dependent. Uh, but to just falsely say it's John Gruden, in my opinion, is a huge mistake. And I know that's kind of what the fan base is doing at the moment. Uh, but either way, uh, the Raiders got outplayed, man. And, you know, in my opinion, Derek Carr could have played better. 
as could have the offensive line. Now, the offense line did get better from week four to week five. They did improve, right? In week four, they gave up pressure on 45% of Derek Carr's dropbacks. Uh, yesterday, it was 33%. So that's a 12% increase, um, which in my opinion, that's better, right? Relative to week four, we're getting better. Now, obviously, I will also say this. I think our run game was a little bit better in terms of like the way the holes were kind of opening up and things like that. Uh, the one thing that does scare me about what we just saw the last two weeks is, you know, the Bears defense is pretty good, um, as is the Chargers. They're pretty good. But the Broncos might have the best defense among that group. Are we confident that we're going to be able to score more than 9 or 14 points against the Broncos? Like, we were 3-0 and at one point, and we're looking at 3-2 and and potentially 3-3 three and unless this offense gets its shit together and really comes together. Again, you know, the offensive line's gotten a little bit better. Uh, in my opinion, from weeks one, two, and three, compared to weeks four and five, I think Derek Carr's gotten much worse, uh, specifically around extending plays with his legs and making things happen. Now, uh, he did do it a couple of times, and great things happen when he did do that, right? Uh, you look at the Chargers game, for example, uh, and you look at when Derek Carr was extending plays, making things happen. Uh, and you look at like that Willie Sneed play, you look at uh, the Ruggs play, right? He was doing a little bit more and, and, and things were clicking at those moments, but he didn't do it enough. When you look at weeks one, two, and three, Derek Carr was doing a ton of things with his legs. So I'm not really sure what changed from weeks one, two, and three to weeks three to weeks four and five for Derek. Uh, but even yesterday, like there was a play in which he was pressured and he kind of rolled out a little bit. Uh, and then he threw the ball deep to, to Darren Waller and Waller got open, right? But it was because Carr was able to avoid the pressure and, and be able to throw the ball uh, that, you know, he extends the play just a little bit and then you get a, a wide open Waller. I know we didn't hit on that play specifically, but those things make a difference. Uh, another play that comes to mind is the fourth down play, the final play for the Raiders offense in which, you know, it really mattered. Uh, it was 17 to nine. We're down by one possession at that point. Uh, fourth and I believe five. Derek Carr avoided the pressure a little bit, and Edwards was open, and Carr just kind of overthrew it a little bit. Uh, obviously, Edwards ran, I believe, right, and Carr thought he was going to go you know, straight backwards or, or forward, I should say. Uh, obviously, that's miscommunication. That, that, that play is not a huge deal. Uh, but either way, the Raiders have to get it together, man. It, it's not acceptable that their offense is struggling this much. Uh, we came into, the, into this season, and we said that if Derek Carr has an average defense we're going to be a playoff team and he has an above average defense at this point uh, 20 points to the bears 28 to the chargers and keep in mind the chargers are a high powered offense uh i don't even remember i think it was 26 points to the dolphins the week before uh the steelers had what maybe 14 or 16 or something like that like teams haven't put, i don't think we've allowed 30 points at all this this year right and even then the dolphins we gave a we gave them a free seven points on a pick six so the defense has played so much better but it, it seems like you know to get that defense we had to give up uh with with uh allowing some of our offensive linemen to, to walk right like we we got rid of guys that are making 35 million dollars on the offensive line like that's what we gave up this coming into this season and we spent that money on guys like yannick and gakwe uh, KJ Wright, right? Guys like that, guys are going to make a difference. Casey Hayward. We spent the money on those type of players and it's shown that our defense is better, but at what expense? Like, were we better off last year in which our offense was, you know, top tier? Uh, we had a good offensive line that could at least pass protect, right? Uh, and again, you know, people, people blame the offensive line or they'll blame John Gruden or they'll blame, you know, something else. And it almost seems like that's unfair, right? Like, if you're going to blame John Gruden or the offensive line, to me, those are excuses for you not to blame Derek Carr. And I feel like that's unfair. You have to blame Derek Carr partly as well. A quarterback, by far, is the most important position. I don't care if he's being pressured. Right? There are guys that were pressured more than Derek Carr yesterday, and they won, right? Or at least they got closer to winning. For example, Sam Darnold was pressured like 68% of his, his uh, dropbacks yesterday. Uh, and I know they lost, right? They lost by three points, uh, but they scored more than the Raiders, right? They scored, I think, eight, 17 or 18 points, uh, which isn't great. I'm, I'm not saying that, but he was by far the most pressured quarterback, and he still scored more points than the Raiders. Uh, Kirk Cousins was pressured more than the Raiders, or more than Derek Carr yesterday, and, and he won, right? So it's not like pressure is the only thing that matters. 
Uh, I also think that uh, when you look at the Raiders yesterday, penalties at certain spots really hurt us, right? I don't think the overall penalties hurt us. I think the penalties in certain spots. Uh, there was a drive in which the Raiders went three and out, which, you know, that's a whole other issue. But the Raiders went three and out. And on that drive specifically, uh, Alex Leatherwood got called for a hold. Uh, I think it was second or it was second and five or third and five. Alex Leatherwood got called for a hold. So instead of getting, you know, a first down because the defense was also called for a penalty, which would have given us the first down, those penalties offset. Uh, and because of those offsetting penalties, we just replayed that down, and we ended up not converting, and we ended up punting the ball, and that was right before halftime, so th those type of penalties and those type of plays really impact the Raiders. Now, at the same time, we can't rely on penalties to be what gives us a first down. We can't do that. We need the offense to go down and just score points. It's, it's as simple as that. Uh, Justin Fields and the Chicago Bears put up 20 points. 20 points, and I would argue that our offense is twice the the firepower of that offense, right? Like the Bears, I don't know. I don't know how they put up more points than the Raiders. Now, I understand their defense is better by the Raiders, but it's not that much better. And honestly, playing the Bears yesterday, their defense wasn't better than the Chargers defense, at least in my opinion, it wasn't. I felt like the Raiders defense was, was or the, the, the Chargers defense was better than the Bears. It was tougher than the Bears. With the Bears, I feel like the Raiders still had things going. But again, mental mistakes, drop passes. Uh, you know, Derek Carr did have a couple of bad throws. Uh, John, Gruden, John Gruden did call a couple of bad plays, in my opinion. Um, you know, certain situations, you know, fourth and one at this point, we've tried running the ball twice and we haven't been able to get it now. Uh, yesterday, we did it once. Uh, and then I believe last week against the Chargers, uh, we might have done it once as well. Or maybe it wasn't the Chargers. Maybe it was the Dolphins. I believe it was the Dolphins game uh, against the Chargers last week. We tried throwing it on fourth down, and we didn't get it. And we tried throwing it yesterday on fourth and five, and we didn't get it. Uh, our fourth down offense has been terrible. And in my opinion, fourth down offense, it's a huge, 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 huge difference in a game. In your guys' opinion, and let me know in the comments below, do you guys think the Raiders should just kick field goals or do you think we should continue to go for it on fourth down? Uh, I like the idea of going for it on fourth down, but I feel like we need something more. We, we need to be able to get the first downs. Uh, I know some people have said the Raiders should switch quarterbacks. We should, you know, as soon as Marcus Mariota is in, we should put him in. Uh, I disagree with that at this point. Uh, if you guys know me, if you guys have been following me, you guys know that I am a huge huge, huge, or at least I have been believer. Uh, and I still am. I'm a huge believer in a dual threat quarterback. And I'm not saying a guy that needs to take off running, right? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a guy who has the mental ability to say, Hey, I'm quick enough to where if I have pressure coming from my right side, I can step up and then boom, take off to the right create two extra seconds and then I can make that extra pass because it's going to give my guy that much more time to, to get open. I'm a huge believer in that. I, I think those type of quarterbacks are the difference between, you know, in the NFL, I think those are the, 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 the that's the future. And I know people are going to say, oh, well, Tom Brady just won a Super Bowl last year and he doesn't do that. Tom Brady does do that. If you guys watch Tom Brady's pocket presence, you will see that he's very comfortable. Anytime there's pressure, he'll step up, he'll step right, he'll, you know, he'll stay, he'll drop back. And then, you know, he, he's comfortable in the pocket. Uh, and I almost feel like Derek Carr at times is not comfortable in the pocket. It almost seems like our pocket is like, like always like around Derek Carr. And, and I don't know if that's the offensive line or if Derek Carr isn't, you know, able to uh, maneuver around the pocket. Uh, either way, I, I think the type of quarterbacks that the Raiders need are guys like Marcus Mariota, right? Guys that are quicker, guys that can make things happen because that also slows down the pass rush, right? So uh, guys aren't going to be rushing upfield as fast because a guy like Mariota can take off. But with all that being said, I don't think Mariota's the guy, all right? I, I, especially when you look at the fact that he just can't stay healthy. I don't know if it makes sense to, to roll with a guy like Mariota when you have a guy like Carr. Uh, at the same time, I don't think Carr deserves any sort of extension. I don't think Carr deserves to be locked in uh, for the next five years at $40 million a year. By no means should the Raiders uh, be obligated to Derek Carr. Now, here's the thing, right? Uh, I don't. I have less faith in John Gruden today than I did when the season started, or, or even after weeks two or three, right? Uh, 
Uh, and the reason why is because John Gruden fails to make adjustments. And I'm not talking about in-game adjustments. I'm talking about adjustments from like, you know, your your players, your coaching staff, and those type of adjustments. And John Gruden really is, is very stubborn. And those kind of things annoy me, man. Like at, at some point, you have to realize that something's not working. You have to get it fixed. Uh, in my opinion, we finally made a change and we decided to put Alex Leatherwood from right tackle to right guard. He still had his fair share of struggles. I will say he played a little bit better, right? His run blocking was actually on display at times. Uh, he did an, a little bit better of a job on in passing pass protection, especially because of the fact that he had a little bit of help from Andre James. Uh, as well as from the right tackle when when you know their that defensive end dropped back in coverage, but I was able to put a little bit better. Uh, but then they went with Brandon Parker, and I think Brandon Parker is a big mistake. And I think this is one of the issues with with John. Right, John wants to keep his guys in guys that he's drafted, guys that he's had faith in, instead of the guy that's better. Right, like let's be honest, Jermaine Illuminor was our second best offensive lineman. And for whatever reason, they they feel that we can roll with Brandon Parker. And again, I understand what the Raiders want to do. I understand that John Gruden wants to be able to run the football. And Jermaine Illuminor was struggling with being able to create uh, gaps and stuff like that. Uh, but if you're going to put guys that can run block before guys that can pass block, these are the results you're going to get. Derek Carr is not going to be comfortable back there. Derek Carr is going to be pressured. Uh, either way, man, the Raiders got to get it fixed because these type of issues are not acceptable. Um, I know I've spent a ton of time on the offense and some of the issues. Uh, we do have some positives in this game, man. And, and again, I know it doesn't seem like it. I absolutely know that it, it looks terrible, right? But you can still give some props to some guys on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, specifically, uh, one who's, you know, the guy's been all over the field and that's Denzel Perryman man the guy had 12 tackles yesterday total tackles I'm positive he is not only leading the Raiders but he's up there in the entire league in total tackles uh, I'm sure he probably has well over 50 tackles right I'm sure he's had at least 10 tackles in each of the first five games the guy has in my opinion been the biggest one of the biggest pickups right and you can argue that Casey Hayward's probably the bigger pickup uh, but he's he's right there, right, with with him and Yannick and, and Casey Hayward. Um, but even then, like Jonathan Abram, man, remember those those rumors, uh, or not even rumors. Remember the hate that John Gruden got, what four months ago? People were saying he's a bust. He needs to be off this team. Uh, Abram had six tackles, but more than that, he had three quarterback hits. And I noticed it. He was blitzing over and over and over again. And that's where Jonathan Abram thrives, man. Uh, I know Justin Fields wasn't the quickest decision maker and that helped out Abram just a little bit. But he had three quarterback hits, man. That's insane. For a safety to get three quarterback hits, man, that's the that's the type of game that Jonathan Abram plays. Uh, and I really like the fact that we're lining him up around the line of scrimmage as a strong safety, as a box safety, a true box safety, uh, because this really helped him out. Um, Nate Hobbs had a pretty good game. He did allow a catch on third down. Uh, he was man to man, I believe, with Allen Robinson or, or maybe it was somebody else. Uh, but he had a pretty nice game. Meek Robinson allowed a couple of catches. He had one pass interference. Uh, but overall, uh, relative to what the Raiders had last year and the year before that and the year before that and the year before that, uh, Meek Robertson's still pretty good. Uh, he was tested a lot yesterday, right? And he didn't give up catches or had a penalty on every single one of those situations. Uh, he still had a ton of, uh, of plays in which he, you know, those one play in which they tried throwing it deep and he pushed the guy, you know, with his body. He kind of uh, forced him out of bounds. Uh, those type of plays Amik Robertson can make. Uh, I know people say, oh, he's too short or whatever it is. You know, it's crazy. I, I don't know exactly how tall Amik is. I think he's like 5'8". Um, but being 5'8", and then the next guy's like 5'10", that's like a two-inch difference. That's like that much. That much, right? It's not really a big difference. Uh, I, I know he's not super tall and he's a little bit shorter, uh, but Amik Robertson is still a good football player. Uh, I, I think if Amik is the starter until Trayvon Mullen gets back. I think over the course of the next couple of games, he'll get better. Uh, obviously, that's just my thoughts on Amik. 
Uh, even then, uh, Jonathan Hankins, man, had a really good game in my opinion, especially defending the run. Uh, Darius Phylon had a couple of good plays. Trayvon Merrick made some good plays as well, uh, especially in coverage, right? We don't, we don't see those coverage plays that he makes, but he had some really solid plays. Uh, Justin Fields was limited, man, uh, you know, 109 yards on 21 attempts. It's actually really good by the Raiders. Uh, obviously, we struggled stopping the run. Uh, their running backs had 139 yards, right? Uh, Khalil Harbor averaged 4.2. Uh, Damian Williams averaged 4 yards per attempt. And, you know, we can't have that. We got to get a little bit better defending the run. Um, I believe Gus Bradley doesn't care about those 4-yard runs, right? Because Gus Bradley would love to be in a 3rd and 3 and then come up and make the stop on third and three, a force and incompletion, right? That's the type of defense Gus Bradley plays. And uh, I think uh, it was Robert Sala who, if you guys don't know, was a Gus Bradley assistant, right? He's from the Gus Bradley system. Uh, he talked about it a little bit, how, um, I forget the term he used, but uh, he talked about how you have this, uh, the, like the free yardage gap for the offense, right? Uh, and what that means is you're going to allow the quarterback on first and 10 to get three or four yards. You're going to allow him to check it down. Everyone has to run to the ball, make the tackle, give them three or four yards. Uh, on second and six or second and seven, you're going to give them the two or three yards. Because then on third and three, third and four, third and two, you can make those stops. And uh, that's that's how Gus Bradley plays defense as well, right? Robert Sala kind of takes that strategy from Gus Bradley. Uh, Bradley's going to play back. Uh, at times, it failed, right? Like yesterday, there was a third and 10. Um, specifically, it was on the touchdown drive that they had. Uh, the Raiders kind of made a law, and I think the announcers kind of talked about it a little bit, and how they kind of allowed, uh, I think one of the receivers ran, and, and you know he ran to the inside. He did a curl. He stopped right between, I think it was Nick Kukowski, and I don't know who the other guy was. And Fields delivered the pass. It was, again, a 10 yards, third and 10 to get the first down. Um, but there were a ton of other times where it was third and one, third and two, and then it was the Raiders were able to stop them, and then it was fourth and one, and they ended up punting multiple times. I think three times on the top of my head that it was fourth and one, and the Raiders forced punts. I know the rushing yards aren't great. Uh, you know, Damian Williams had a 14-yard one. Herbert had an 11-yard run. Um, you know, that's 25 yards on two carries, right? That means that they had 31 other carries that went for 112 yards. Uh, you know, that brings that average down to like three to three and a half, right? So it's not terrible, but we do got to get better, right? Uh, Hankins has to play better. Quinton Jefferson has to play better. The linebackers have to play better. Uh, you know, one of the things that kind of scares me is when Denzel Perryman's taking the, the crossing pattern and he's running deep with the guy on that cover three uh, because... Uh, Patrick Mahomes is going to love to throw Tyree Kill the ball in those situations. When Denzel Perryman's running with Tyree Kill, Patrick Mahomes is going to throw that deep, man. And again, I know we played a guy like Fields, Jacoby Brissett, uh, Lamar Jackson. Those guys aren't guys that are going to throw the ball deep. Uh, even Big Ben, he really didn't take any of those deep shots uh, in terms of like those crossing patterns. Uh, but we're going to start playing those quarterbacks a little bit more. Uh, you know, uh, Herbert took those shots. Herbert was was running those cover three beaters. Uh, Fields is a young rookie, right? He's going to get better, but right now he's not there. So Gus Bradley's defense was able to work. But uh, we got to get a little bit better and a little bit tighter on the defense side of the ball. Again, I'm not worried about the defense. Uh, you know, we have an average defense. Just as we expected, we have an average defense. Hopefully, the offensive line can continue to improve. I, I do have faith. I do think they'll get better. Uh, you know, Brandon Parker had, I think, three penalties this past game, uh, two sacks at a minimum, multiple losses, multiple pressures, multiple hits. Um, I do think that if he has one more game like that, um, I will start I will start the pressure, man. I, I will start getting it out there, and, and I would want you guys to do the same thing. To let's push the narrative, man. Let's get Brandon Parker out. Now, we'll give him one more week. But if he has the same game he had against the Bears, against the Broncos, you got to make the switch and put in Jermaine Illuminor. Illuminor is a veteran. He's, what, five, six years in the league. Uh, he was starting for the Patriots last year as their right tackle. 
And I'm sure right now the Patriots would love to have Illuminor back, right? Especially because Trent Brown didn't work out. Really, the Raiders traded Trent Brown for Illuminor. Uh, and I think the Raiders are better with Illuminor than they will be with Brandon Parker. Obviously, that's going to be up to the coaches to really uh, decide, you know, what they think. But uh, with that being said, man, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was a little bit longer. I kind of wanted to talk, kind of get my thoughts out there, kind of get my opinions, my takes. Uh, I know... You know, some of you guys might not agree with me. Some of you guys might disagree with me. Uh, but either way, I just hope you guys keep an open mind. You know, we all have our thoughts and opinions. As I, I read and listen to your guys' feedback, and I look forward to reading your guys' comments. Uh, you know, when I post this video, the second I post it, the first five to ten comments that come within the first two minutes, I know you guys haven't watched my video yet. So, like, you know, sometimes people will just kind of put a comment out there. Uh, at that point, I know you guys haven't watched the video as opposed to the people that comment 20, 25, 30 minutes later, or however long the video is, I know you guys have actually watched the video. So I appreciate it. Uh, but I want to know what you guys think, man. Give me your thoughts and opinions on the offense, the defense, the coaches, the O-line, the uh, Derek Carr versus Mariota, the, all, all that. Let me know in the comments below if you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.